what's going on ladies and gents welcome back to classy's kitchen and as you can tell by the title today we are making stuffed shells now this is the way i make my stuffed shells um i know there's tons of different ways but my stuffed shells is definitely something to write home about i promise um what set mines aside from a lot of them is a lot of times people don't put meat in theirs i put meat um, and I don't use ricotta cheese. I hate ricotta cheese. If I'm making them for someone and they request that I put it, then I will. But if I'm just making it the way I make it or for myself, I never put ricotta cheese. So let's get into the ingredients. So here I already diced, um, a half of green pepper and a half of onion. I only used half because it's a large onion that I used. Um, the green peppers and onions you can do to your discretion. Sometimes as a cheat, depending on how much in a rush I am, I even get the frozen bag. There's a frozen bag that has green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, and onion. You can use that as well. I have jumbo shells. Um, I have mozzarella cheese. I'm going to get back to the cheese too because there's something else about my cheese that set me aside too. Um, I have two jars of ragu sauce. I probably will not be using both. I probably only use one or one and like a few drops out of the other. I have my ground meat. Um, I'm using ground beef today. Sometimes I do use um, sausage or you can get the ground sausage. But sometimes I dice the sausage as well. Seasonings, I'm going to throw in some black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, um, seasoning salt, and a dab of adobo. Not a lot. And then back here I have my sugar too. Now the sugar is not to make it sweet. I'm not going to put enough in it to make it sweet. When you're doing something that's not sweet and you put a teaspoon of sugar in it, it makes the flavors pop. I promise you. Now back to the sugar. Another thing that I do, going to let y'all in on my little secret. So I use mozzarella cheese, which most people do, right? I also use sharp cheddar cheese. But... Most of the times I use the white sharp cheddar, so you can't tell that I have sharp cheddar because it all blends in, but it tastes amazing. So those are the ingredients. Um, I have my pan here. We're going to get the meat going soon. And then I have a pot one that I already started to boil with water for the shells. And then I put oil in there too. So that's oil floating at the top, um, just so that the shells don't stick. All right. So... I need to get this camera on a tripod so that we can get this going. Alright, so I have my pan on. So I'm going to put that in there. And that's about a pound of ground beef. Maybe a little bit more. I'm going to break that up as I drop ground beef off the top. <laughs> Um, I love for my ground beef to cook very, very well. I'm very funny when it comes to it um, because I like my meat cooked. I'm not that order the steak and it's still bleeding. You bite the cow. Yeah, it's a no for me. Um, so I'm just going to chop that right on up. And can we talk about the ground beef prices during this pandemic? For this one pound of ground beef, I just spent over $9. And yeah, I'm not with it. Um, so I'm going to add in and now again, if you've been watching my videos, you know, I hate the whole measurement thing. I kind of just freehand. Um, but if you want to know a measurement, I would say about, okay, so I just added black pepper. So I would say about a teaspoon and a half of black pepper. Or if you can eye out what I'm putting in through the measurements, you could do that too. That was garlic powder teaspoon onion powder teaspoon teaspoon seasoning salt going in there I don't know I don't always put adobo but today I want to put adobo so I'm going to put like a sprinkle not even a half a teaspoon Sometimes I do put saison though. That's just hit or miss. It just kind of depends on what I want to do. Then I dumped in that pepper and onions. And again, that was a half of a green pepper chopped and half of um, a large onion. 
And you can use your discretion as far as the peppers and onions go. I love peppers and onions, so I'm always extra and doing a lot. Extra because I'm extra. Also, I did not put any oil, any type of liquids or anything in the pot because ground beef makes its own oil. It's not necessary. And that's what you see um, is happening. So I am going to just mix this in. So that we can get those seasonings throughout there as best as we can. Now, you're going to just cover this or you can do it uncovered, but I'm going to cover it. I feel that it, for me, I just feel like it cooked through quicker and better. Um, so I'm just going to cover this and allow it to do its thing. Periodically, you want to lift the cover and just give it a good mix and chop because what will happen is it will, it's going to cook no matter what, but it's going to cook kind of clump together and you don't want it to clump together into one big clump. You, you're going to need like a minced meat. So you're just going to keep doing that. And while that is going, now we're going to shift over here to our shells. I want to do this whole box or not because every time I do a whole box but just like home I never use it I never need all of it bump it we're gonna do the whole box so that's one box um also guys you could always get a little creative with what you put in your shells you could add something to this you could take something away this is just what I like again sometimes I do also use sausage um, I love, love, love to put um, spinach in there as well. Although I'm not going to do spinach today. But I do love to do spinach as well. So we're going to let the shells come to a boil. And we're going to give the meat some time to cook. And I'll be back. Alright guys, so we're back. Um... In the course of cooking this, I did already mix the meat up a little bit and stir it and everything. Then I covered it back up to cook for a little while. So let's see what it's looking like now. It smells so good. And it's looking great. So the meat is done. Get into this meat. good see that and then over here we have the shells which are boiling and you don't want to overcook your shells you, you want to watch your shells close because if you overcook them then they're going to fall apart and it's just going to be a mess to try to stuff so these shells are good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off um, and this meat is good to go so what I'm gonna do at this point I'm gonna drain the meat and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what's the next steps on that and I'm gonna drain the shells as well because even if you cut them off you still don't want them to just sit in the pot of hot water because they're gonna continue to cook and they're gonna get soft and mushy and you, we just don't want that. So, I will be back with the next steps for the meat. Alright, so we now have um, our meat strained. Our noodles are also straining off to the side. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so, now I'm going to show you what I do with my meat to basically make the filler for the stuffed shells. So, I'm going to add this ragu. That you saw earlier on. I'm going to add the whole jar. Now this is one jar. Um, for one pound of meat. Did anybody else put a little bit of water in there and squish it around? Or is it just me? You know? Every ounce of sauce counts, you know? A little swivel it around. Pour that in there. Um, 
So let's mix that up. I also have my pot on right now, you guys, um, on medium to low heat. And it's already cooked and everything, but you'll see why in just a moment. So I'm mixing that up a little bit. Now I'm going to add, remember earlier I had sugar? This is about a tablespoon of sugar in there. So you're going to add that. Mix that up. Again, it's not going to make it sweet. Now it's to your discretion. You can add the sugar or not. But when you're making something that's not sweet and you add sugar, it makes the flavors pop. Not making it sweet. It shouldn't be to the point where it's sweet. You, should, you don't even taste that it has sugar in it. I've been doing these shells for years. No one has ever mentioned that they were sweet or that they had sugar in them. So, I have that mixed all in there. And salt works the same way too. A lot of people put salt into things that are sweet. Now, I'm going to add the mozzarella cheese. I'm adding one whole bag. This is an 8 ounce bag. And it also says 2 cups on it. So, 2 cups of mozzarella cheese is going in there then that same eight ounce bag i have a white um sharp cheddar cheese i'm gonna add a cup of that inside there so half of the bag will go inside there and i'm going to mix that up now, at this point, if I was going to put spinach in it, this is where I would add my spinach, um, shrimps, uh, sausage, whatever it is that, you know, you want to add. At this point, you would add it. Of course, you would add that stuff in there cooked. I wouldn't add raw shrimps or anything at this point. What I do is anything extra that I'm going to add to the meat, I cook it separately on the side. And at this point, I mix it all in. Because what we're doing right now is just going to marinate um, the cheeses and the meat and the sauce and everything together. Just putting together the filler, basically. I'm going to mix that all in. And then I'm going to cover this and let this come to a simmer. Now... Again, at this point, it depends on how much in a rush I am because the shells are going to go in the oven and bake. So everything is going to melt regardless. So sometimes if I'm in a big rush, I won't let this simmer or anything like that. I'll just mix it all together and stuff it and then bake it and it works just the same. But I'm going to give it like a, a minute, not long, because as you can see, it's pretty much already melted. So I'm going to give it a minute, and then when I come back, we are going to begin to stuff our shells. All right, so this is what it's looking like. Nice and cheesy. The filler is all good and ready to go. So at this point, I have my oven on heating up um, to 350, and we are ready to stuff shells so I'm gonna move this over here I am using a tin pan today yes I am <laughs> now I'm now I'm gonna use that other jar of ragu that I had but like I said I'm not gonna use much so at this point I'm just going to use the spoon I'm using a teaspoon a tablespoon excuse me to just put at the bottom of the pan. This is because I don't want my shells to stick when they bake. Um, if I was using my glass casserole dish and not being lazy, you know, you guys know I don't wash, like to wash dishes. So I use stuff I could throw away. <laughs> but if I was using my glass casserole dish, I would do the same thing. It doesn't matter what dish I use. Um, I put a little bit of sauce at the bottom. So there's that. Now... I have the shell. I'm just going to take a scoop of the filler. Just one scoop. Um, of course, you can scoop as much as you want. You can make it as full or as light as you would like. 
and I'm just going to put it inside the shell. As soon as I could get the cheese to cooperate. So, if you guys could see. Excuse my ratchet nails. I'm having a hard time getting them off. <laughs> so, I still have four nails. But anyway. And just set that in there like so. So, I'm just going to basically do this same process with all of the shells until they're all full. And I wish you guys could see. But the only thing I'm doing is basically just scooping it out that saucepan into the shell. I'm trying to record this as best I can. And see? I'm gonna do one more in my shelves. Oh, I didn't tell you guys this part. I rinsed it in cool water and I just put it in a bowl with no, there's no water inside the bowl. I just strained the hot water off and rinsed it with cool water. So they're just in a bowl. So I'm just picking them from the bowl and stuffing them with the shells. Just so you know that part because I didn't say that. So I'm going to show you a one more time. Three, I'll stuff three of them because three is my favorite number. One time for the one time. So... Just stuffing that in there like so. And that's it. That's what it looks like. And then I'm just lining them along the pan. So I'm going to stuff the rest of these shells. And I will be back to show you the next step. Alright guys. So I have all these shells stuffed. Um, which stuffing shells... It's not hard. It's just time consuming. So there's that. So the next thing we're going to do is I take a little sauce and I put them on top of the shells now. Just because I'm going to bake them and I'm going to bake them uncovered. So I don't want them to dry out on me. So cha cha cha. And not a whole lot. Just like a little something across the top. Um... Just spread it with the back of the spoon. So it's a little razzle dazzle, you know, <laughs> like so. So the next thing now, um, now we're gonna add the cheese. Now I showed you guys that I use sharp cheese as well. So if I was gonna use the yellow cheese. Um, I will put the yellow cheese first so that you can't see it underneath my mozzarella cheese. But I'm using white sharp cheddar, but I'm still going to put the white cheese first. And I'm just going to sprinkle it like so. Um, do this to your discretion. However much cheese you like. The sharp cheese you don't need a lot of. Um, it has, to me, it has a stronger taste than... Um, the mozzarella cheese so you don't need much so that was all of what I had so I did have a little bit extra left over in my fridge so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this like so and now I'm going to top it off with mozzarella cheese and it's kind of going to go right over top of the sharp cheese and again to your discretion this is a new bag of um mozzarella cheese so and this is also the two cups eight ounce bag that i'm using i enjoy the taste of mozzarella cheese so I'm going to go extra because I'm extra. <laughs> so I did use that whole bag on the top. Um, I used a whole box of shells. There is a lot. This is a fairly large pan. So this is what it's looking like. So now I'm going to put it in the oven. We're going to bake this again uncovered for about 20 to 30 minutes um it's gonna just depend on your oven some people oven heat a little quicker 
a little hotter than others again i did already have my oven preheated so when i come back the cheese is going to be melted all right so it is now out of the oven looking good smelling even better i'm sure it tastes even better than that so this is the finished product you guys if you have not already please like this video subscribe to my channel leave a comment down below let me know how this recipe comes out for you maybe you do your shells a little different or any feedback or whatever it is you want to leave drop it in the comments below i love to talk if you guys have not picked up on that already <laughs> so um be sure to comment below and also share this video share this video with anybody everybody tell them come on over here so they can see what's happening on Classy's channel. So I have put it on a plate. Um, I have it paired with a salad. Sometimes I would pair this with like some garlic bread, some Texas toast. You can pair it with whatever your heart desires. I've seen people fry like little wings on the side, what have you. Um, I'm going to have mine with a salad. So again if you have not already please 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 like this video subscribe comment down below and share with your family and friends until next time ladies and gents i'm out